Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the project presentation for the course Image Processing and Computer Vision. My project is about an image detection algorithm. The topic is general design of an image specific edge detection algorithm. What is edge detection? Edge detection simply is the diff uh, in an image when you come across a range of intensity values the difference in adjacent pixels, the intensity difference in adjacent pixels gives you whether there is a sudden change in the value or not. That is, if there is a sudden change, that means an edge has occurred there. If there is no sudden change, then maybe it is a continuous variation. It might not be an edge or it could be an edge which is, which is not showing up in the image. As shown in the slide, when, for a binary image, whenever there is an edge, um, there would be a conversion from 0 to 1. However, finer edges are lost in binary images. However, in a color image, you find a number of different uh, values for the intensities. So whenever the difference in adjacent pixels are greater than a particular threshold value, that is when we determine that it's an edge or not. Now, the main challenge in edge detection lies in deciding these threshold values, as we will see. There are different edge detection methods that are prevalent today. Edge detectors may depend on the first derivative or the second derivative of the image intensity values. So if you, if you directly calculate the difference between the adjacent intensities and use that value, that is a first derivative method. Otherwise, it is the second. When you further uh, differentiate that value, that is you calculate the difference of differences. Canny edge detector is one of the most popular edge detectors used today. Why is it popular is that um, it uses a pre-processing uh, inherently. That is, it uses a Gaussian filter to, uh, to filter the image, original image, and then it applies a Sobel operator on it. You get Sobel, uh, you get an edge detected. However, in Canny, there are two threshold values. There is a higher threshold value and a lower threshold value. Now, if the intensity difference that has been computed from using the Sobel operators is higher than the higher threshold value, then it is considered a strong edge. However, if there is uh, any intensity difference that is lower than the lower threshold value, then it is discarded as not an edge. Then finally, if the threshold value lies between both the, thresh uh, the lower threshold value and the higher threshold value, then you check for the connectivity of the pixel. And if it is connected to a strong edge, only then we mark it as a strong uh, as, a, as an edge. So this makes it robust to those pixels that could be discarded thinking that they are noise, then in reality they are edge pixels. Now here, this is the original image I have used and we see the uh, results of directly applying edge detectors on it. A zero cross detector, canny detector, log detector shows such results. As you can see, the values are not at all. Sorry. Um, as you can see, the value, the edges obtained are not at all accurate. Now, I have used a technique which is based on the first reference, dynamic thresholding based edge detection by Nita Nen, Gaurav Jindal, Ashish Garg, and Anshu Jain. Now, this paper makes use of the histogram of an image so that it calculates certain parameters from the image and then it, it uses the parameters calculated to further derive the edge out of the image. Now the technique you adopted is first I have filtered the image using a Gaussian filter then I convert it to grayscale which is, a necess which is necessary to simplify operations. We could conduct the whole edge detection along the three different components of the image but that would be complicating it. The third step is to use an averaging mask and then I have reduced the image size to 256 to keep calculations at a minimum. Then I, up, uh, I collect the histogram of the image. Once the histogram is collected, what is a histogram? Histogram is the number of pixels for different intensity values. So once I get the number of pixels for the different intensity value, I can also get a graph of how the pixels are distributed across different intensity values. Now from the with this histogram data, I create a set which contains all these values. From this, I calculate only the local peaks. Now, again, from this look, from the set of local peaks, I take out those values which are within the within one percent of the maximum value of the maximum frequency, and I discard all other values. Now, this has this value of 
one percent has been uh, empirically decided and it has been proved effective and this is the value that is proposed by the paper i have based my research on uh, from the set that we get now we further discuss those pixels which are just i mean those values which are which set which are corresponding to pixels that are 20 intensity levels away so we can discard these because they are very close to each other then using um, this this final set that we have we have a relevant set so using this relevant set of peaks these are the main peaks we have to consider while design go, for proceeding so using this main set we um, calculate the optimal thresholds using otsu's method using these are some set of thresholds that we have obtained with our computation but given this set otsu's method calculates the optimal optimal values of the thresholds now based on this we have segmented the image then uh, yeah the image used is the resized earlier image that was resized on this we apply the canny operator on this we use a mask which just clears out the edge a bit now we'll see the results of them. This is the original image and the filtered image. Now the res this is the image converted to gray and it has been resized. For this resized image, this is the histogram that we see. We see that the pixels are not, I mean, equally distributed across all intensity values. There are higher pixels in the middle range. This is a fairly good exposed picture. From the histogram data we have created, I mean, this is the histogram data, uh, I mean from the histogram data we create a set of the local peaks. This we, com this we compare in the histogram whether the value adjacent to it is should be lesser than that maxim that particular value, in that case it is a peak. So counting the local peaks, this is just a part of the table that is generated. From that we have eliminated those that are not within 1% which are lesser than the 1% of maximum value. This is also a part of the table. Then finally we get relevant peaks. Now these are six relevant peaks obtained for this image. The number of peaks that might be uh, derived may be different. So here we see that the frequency is range from 337 to 8, but the values are for the value mainly in the middle to higher range, we have high frequencies. Then Otsu's thresholds are generated. Um, the same values are shown then we base the uh, threshold values on the I mean using the, the threshold values we segment the image once the image is as you can see there are like six different values that, uh, that are there so there will be only six intensity levels across the image and using this here also in the image you can notice that due to light there is a problem so the segmentation is not very accurate this might create false edges finally the edge we have detected is on the right side the left uh, the, so the left side image is just by using the canny operation and on the right we have eroded the edge I mean we've, we have made the edge finer this is the final result the original image and the edge detected image. These are the references used. Thank you. The edges, uh, edge detection operation is useful because I mean we can extract an, uh, a particular part of the image. We can make a machine intelligent enough to calculate, uh, maybe obtain a shape from the image automatically and such operations. This is good for object recognition, motion tracking. Now I will run the program. Give a demo. Once we will run it with the same image, and we can use another image. At every stage, I am displaying the image so that we understand which process. Uh, in which part of the process we are in. This is the original and then the figure 2 represents Gaussian filtered image. Now we will be getting the grey image. Okay. Now 
This is the original image. We have just applied the canny operator on the original and this is the result we get. Of course, after graying it. Now this is the histogram that we have obtained for the image. This is after uh, segmenting the image and directly applying the canny operator on it. This is after obtaining the, after clearing out the edge. There is not much of a difference because the edge is clear enough. This is the same image eroded can. These results are obtained for, as you can see, um, Three two six four into two four four eight image, and we have resized it to a two fifty six row image. That becomes two fifty six into one ninety two. Now let us let me demonstrate this using another image. Um, And in the real scenario, when we want real edges detected, we want them to be very fine. That is why it's important that we refine the edge detection algorithm and make it as accurate as possible. This is the original image and the final canny image that we have is in the last. Yeah, this is what we have, this is the edge we have detected. Oh, we can also see the histogram for this image. As you can see, it is concentrated on the dark side a bit. In fact, I think that is because of the gray amount of gray in this image. And in this, for this particular image, if we check the number of relevant peaks that are generated, we can see that they would be different. In this case, 7 peaks, C, uh, C index is 7, that means there are 7 peaks created. This is the final relevant peak table. This is all for my presentation. Thank you.